Good evening, everyone. Let me welcome you to the regular meeting for the Burke County, uh, Burke County Board of Commissioners for Tuesday, September the 17th, 2019. Let me welcome all of you here tonight, Madam Clerk. Uh, all the commissioners are here except for Commissioner Abley, who has an excused absence. The county attorney's here and also county manager and deputy county managers. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you will, pull your phones out if you got one. Now look at them, and if they're on, set them on vibrate for me. Vibrate or silent, and we would appreciate that very, very much, okay? If you're a speaker tonight, when you come to the front podium, if you'll activate the red light on the speaker there so that we can make sure that everyone gets recorded. With us tonight to do our Pledge of Allegiance will be our Salem Elementary School uh, uh, folks that are standing back there in the corner where Ginger Stinson is the principal. And I'm going to have our invocation to start with. I'm going to ask our high sheriff if he'll come forward and do our invocation. Then after that, y'all can come forward and do our Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, if you'll stand with me as the sheriff prays. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. And Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and God to do your business conducted here by the Burke County Commissioners. We thank you for each and every one of them and, Father, what they do to serve each and every citizen here. We thank you for the Salem Elementary School and as they come and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, we thank you for these opportunities just to come and, and, and be a part of what we want to do, all the servants of Burke County, to serve you and, Father, serve each and every citizen. So we thank you for all the opportunities you've given us, God. We just ask that you would lead and guide and direct in uh, this county commissioners meeting for all pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, group. stay right there and come up front we want to come down and take a picture with you okay we're gonna put you on the wall over there so you can see it later on all right parents come on up I know you want to take a picture get up here close Moving on to item number four will be the approval of the agenda. Gentlemen, you've had the agenda for about a week now, and we will entertain a motion at this time. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right. All of you heard Commissioner Toto's motion. All in favor, signify by raising the right hands. Madam Clerk, that will be 4-0. Moving on to item number five is the approval of meeting minutes. And gentlemen, in front of you, you have the May 7th, 2019 pre-agenda meeting, the May 7th, 2019. A 2019 recess meeting and May 21st, 2019 regular meeting. What is your pleasure on the, uh, moving to approve the minutes? Mr. Chairman, in, remo in uh, reviewing those minutes, I did not find any discrepancy. Therefore, I make the motion they be approved as 
rendered. All right, gentlemen, you've heard Commissioner Tyler's motions. All in favor, signify by raising of the right hand. Madam Clerk, that will be 4-0. Moving on to our presentations. Our first presentation tonight will be from Caitlin Settlemeyer, our ASD Pet of the Month. So if you folks will move forward with the Pet of the Month. Ms. Caitlin, if you can get to the microphone, we would appreciate it. Okay. So, we have um, Caesar here this month. Caesar's a three-year-old shepherd mix. Um, he's going to be our dog of the month. Um, Caesar's a really, really laid-back dog. Um, he does well with other dogs. Um, he's very curious of cats. So, um, But we are looking for a forever home for Caesar. He loves to hike. Um, we took him with us to dinner this evening. He just laid by our feet. So um, he's going to make somebody a very, very wonderful dog. Um, he is a larger dog, so um, that will hopefully fit with somebody's lifestyle. So if you're looking to adopt, please come and adopt Mr. Caesar or look at our other dogs we have available for adoption. Lindsay, do you want to add anything? He's a great car rider. Um, he can put in the car and lays right down the father in the body. Um, I think he's pretty much perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much, Caitlin. <laughs> uh, Y'all stay there for just a few minutes. Okay, if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you know our motto here in Burke County is all about advancing, our motto down, down here at the Animal Services Center is all about adopting. So what we would like for you to do is take a look on Facebook. There are a number of beautiful dogs and cats on that Facebook page for you to go down, make some child or some adult very, very happy. Gentlemen, anything you want to say about our pet of the month that's here tonight? All right. Make sure you take a picture. Caesar, good luck, buddy. He's not right either. <laughs> he's telling you he's right. Come on, come on, Caesar. Thank you, ladies, so very much. Also, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, we're going to have a pet of the month every month, so be, there'll be, some, be one here for you to take a look at. Next on our agenda is a proclamation proclaiming September as National Recovery Month, and with us tonight is the beautiful Kim James. Kim? Thank you very much. So I'm excited to come and report um, that September is Recovery Month, and we celebrated Recovery Month on this past Saturday. If you were, happened to be downtown, it was awfully loud. Um, but we had a great time. We had over 425 individuals come and celebrate the concept of recovery, celebrate the fact that we're all recovering together. I'm sure everyone's aware that Burke County is in the midst of an epidemic, and it's a substance use epidemic. And we tend to talk about this in very degrading tones, and it's a very depressing subject, and it's a very um, heavy subject. And so it's great to be able to come and report to you that even though on the proclamation it talks about overdose and it talks about the number of deaths and how high the death rate is in Burke County. The great thing is that we have a county of multiple agencies, not just treatment agencies, but we've got um, county agencies, we have private agencies, we have individuals, we have community members all coming together to celebrate the fact that we're all recovering together and really working together to make this happen. So that rally was sponsored by the Burke Substance Abuse Network. Um, and other exciting news, we have over 150 active members in that coalition. That is something that is unheard of across the country, not just across the state. And so it's exciting to say that Burke County is on the forefront being a model for this coalition. And I know that there are members of the, of the board here that are on that as well. And so I'm excited to say that we're delighted to be part of Burke County and we're delighted to make Burke County a statewide and a countywide model. So thank you for declaring this proclamation today. Thank you, Kim. If you'll stay there just a moment. Gentlemen, any questions for Kim on the proclamation? Mr. Chairman, I don't have a question, but I'm reminded of that old saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And I hope this resolution works at the prevention and keeps those people off of that horrible drug. So we appreciate your work, and we do endorse your resolution 100%. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I don't think there's a family in Burke County that's not been touched in one manner, shape, or form by some kind of um, substance abuse or some kind of alcohol abuse. Every, everyone knows my story, how I was touched. And uh, 
when you lose a family member, when you bury a child, you just, uh, you never get over that. So Kim does a, just tremendous work, along with the sheriff of this county, who, is, who has been in the forefront of trying to eliminate drugs, in, illegal drugs in this county. And, and I don't know that we'll ever be able, even by a pro proclamation, to recognize how far forward this county has advanced in trying to eliminate drugs. We'll never be able to do it, but we got to keep on that process of, of doing that. And you two, thank you so very much for, for what you do. Uh, I must apologize. I don't get to all the meetings that I should get to. I try to get to everyone, and some of us, everyone that we can, but keep up the fight, because that's what it is to try to eradicate this county from, from those illegal drugs. Anyone else? All right, Jim, I need a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve proclamation number 2019-04. Confer Commissioner Britton's motion. All in favor signify by raising of the right hand. Madam Clerk, that'll be 4-0. Thank you, Kim. Thank you very much. Moving on to our next two items uh, will be by the sheriff. This is also an exciting time uh, for Brian and I as former law enforcement officers. Uh, the sheriff will be recognizing several people for uh, gaining the advanced law enforcement certification. And uh, I can attest to you, and Brian can too, that it takes a lot of hard work to get that. I'm very proud to have mine hanging on the wall, as is Brian. Sheriff? Thank you, sir. And um, I don't know where, Kim, where we're going to be at tomorrow. Uh, I we spoke together in a meeting last night. We were in a meeting this morning, and now she's here. here. So uh, we've been traveling in the same circles. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, commissioners and Mr. Manager and clerk, for the opportunity to bring these men and women that we have that earn these advanced law enforcement certificates. Uh, it's through a combination of education, experience, and a lot of training. So I would like to ask Jared Lee Ball to come up. Let me read what this uh, certificate says. By virtue of the authority vested in it by the laws of the state and in recognition of the attainment of training and educational objectives commensurate with the role of a professional law enforcement officer and of personal devotion and service to the people of North Carolina, the Attorney General, and the Chairman of the members of the North Carolina Sheriff's Education and Training Standards Commission, through the authority vested in them by the laws of the state, do hereby award Jared Lee Ball with the Advanced Law Enforcement Certificate. Let's see if Jared wants to say anything, Sheriff. I'm going to put him on the spot. Mm -hmm. Just come right up that microphone there, brother. Uh, thank you all very much for the recognition on it. Um, I've been at the Sheriff's Office about 10 years now. and do a lot of hard work there, but it um, took a little while to get it. I, I went to school before it. I was able to get it a little earlier than some that have been in law enforcement because uh, of my bachelor's degree, but I um, appreciate the recognition for it. Well, Jared, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, and especially for Brian and myself, we appreciate the work that you have done for the citizens of this county. As I said, I'm well aware of how many hours it takes for you to do that. And we should be proud because we have another deputy sheriff here that's holding a bachelor's degree. You know, we have well-trained officers in this county, and I'm very proud of what you've done. So from all of us, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Again. Sir. And then this next one goes to Lieutenant Steve Massey, and I'd ask him and his family to come forward. And it does have the same information that I just read, but uh, again, and thank you, Mr. Chair, about sharing what these officers are doing uh, for the county. They are dedicated officers that serve uh, faithfully of, to the county, and we appreciate the opportunity that we have to come before 
the commissioners and the public to award these certificates. So I'd like to award Lieutenant Steve Massey and his family <laughs> this advanced law enforcement certificate. All right, Steve, you want to say anything, please? Well, uh, yes, I do, in a way. Uh, the reason I brought my whole family, um, my mother, she worked, retired from DSS in Burke County. My dad was uh, 23 years military, retired. My brother, 28 years? 28 years working for the school systems, DSS. So pretty much our whole family has come through uh, the county in retirement and and that's why we all came down. We're going to go eat here in a few minutes. But um, I just want to thank y'all for this. I've been in the department since law enforcement since 1992. Uh, so I've got a, three or four more years still left in me. But I want to thank y'all for the uh, not only the county recognizing the advancement certificates for the training. For us. I just want to thank y'all for what y'all do for us. Well, Steve, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we want to thank you for what you do for the number of years of services. Maynard has said many, many times that finding somebody to serve anymore is uh, even in volunteers or even in a job is hard to do anymore. <clears throat> and especially in the, the law enforcement arena, we, we've had some, some hard times trying to get the pay adjusted. I hope we've got it to where we've uh, got it to a level now that is acceptable for the sheriff and you guys out there, because I know you're there to serve and protect. And it's, um, you know, when Brian and I were on the road too, it's, it's just, you never know. You know when you leave that morning whether you're going to come back to your family or not so it is a, a service and it is a sacrifice and from all of us we certainly do appreciate it and the work you've done so thank you appreciate Steve. It. yeah my wife back there <laughs> thank you. chair mr chair i would like to say thank you for uh, the increase in making us uh, market competitive uh, that's been much appreciated and has really transformed our ability to hire people and talking about old and been here a long time i was telling kim and the group last night that uh, when i started maybe and probably when you started we could start at a very young age and i was uh, i've been in law enforcement 42 years next month and they would let me start when i was five so <laughs> thank you sir thanks sheriff all right, moving on to item number seven, there's our scheduled public hearings. Our first one is Community Development Zoning Text Amendment ZTA 2019-01 in public hearing, uh, presented by Peter Manor. Pete? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Board. Madam Clerk, good to see you. Um, before you tonight is a zoning text amendment to the Burke County Zoning Ordinance um, that requests us to amend section 1216-7F4. This uh, pertains to residential boat docks or moorings. Um, it, this was a citizen-initiated request. The applicants are here tonight. Um, I trust you have looked over uh, the information in your packet, but just to, uh, to read through the request in, in 1216-7F4, uh, it reads, permitted roof materials include dark toned wood shakes, dark toned brown, gray, black shingles with a minimum wind rating of 80 miles per hour, and dark toned brown, gray, or black synthetic products that mimic natural materials. Metal is not a permitted roofing material. That's how it currently reads. Um, this amendment um, is to add to that. Um, that section and so it would carry on in that um, metal is not a permitted roofing material on Lake James. On Lakes Road Hiss and Hickory, roofing material for moorings and gazebos may also include metal. Roof colors must mimic the natural environment and pre be pre-approved by the zoning administrator prior to permitting. Um, this went before the planning board on June 27, 2019. Uh, the, the board listened to the request from the applicants. 
also listen to staff and there was some um, discussion uh, with the board and staff uh, uh, about this um, and they felt that um, it would be appropriate since the Catawba River chain in that area encompasses Lake Hickory as well to also include Lake Hickory in this amendment. Um, and so uh, with the uh, approval of the applicant to amend their uh, request, the plan board voted unanimously to uh, make this amendment to the Burke County Zoning Ordinance. I know that um, uh, there was a question by one of the commissioners uh, about Lake James. Uh, and uh, what type of um, uh, boat docks were out there and would uh, that, that change to metal uh, roofs um, be brought on for Lake James as well. And the, the amendment that went, went forward through the planning board did not address that, so that is not included in, in this request. However, staff is... Um, uh, doing a complete rewrite of the zoning ordinance at this time and we are definitely going to look at that possibility uh, to see if if that's the right uh, move to make um, for Lake James. Uh, the uh, commissioner also asked um, for some sort of um, idea of what type of boat dock situation and roofing material uh, situation was on Lake James. Um, uh, Br Bradley Kirkley, the zoning administrator, went out and counted every dock on the Burke County side of Lake James and um, came up with a total of 477 uh, residential boat docks. Of that 477 total, 59 were metal roof coverings, and those had been... Um, uh, back in the old days, you know, before we really had rules on, on Lake James, majority of those in those older subdivisions. There was another 60 um, that were the two level, um, what some refer to as party decks. You, you have a, a second level that's flat or you can go up and, and uh, hang out or whatever. So uh, the remaining 358 uh, residential docks are just flat platform docks and that makes up 75% uh, of the docks on Lake James. Just wanted to uh, follow up with that commissioner's request for those numbers and that concludes my presentation at this time. Thank you Peter. Questions or comments for Pete? Mr. Chairman, I do not have a question, but I didn't make the pre-agenda, Pete, but I did want to advise you that in addition to the colors that you listed in this presentation, yes, sir. I don't know if you know or not, but it also comes in cam camouflage, and it has three different patterns in it, uh, and I was going to go by a tin place and bring you a, a, a copy and I apologize, I just simply didn't have time. Didn't, I ran out of time. Uh -huh. But anyhow, just for the record, uh, you can get 10 in a camouflage, three different patterns. Yeah, I, I think you can get that in just about any color you want. And um, that's why we, we did specify um, colors that would blend into the natural environment. Um, and uh, I think they'll have a lot of choices with that. All right, Pete, thank you so much. Gentlemen, your pleasure on zoning amendment 2019 01. Oh, excuse me, pardon me. Okay, at this time, I'm going to open the public hearing. Madam Clark, I'm so sorry, I was way ahead of myself there. Public hearing, is there anyone here that would like to speak to ZTA 2019 01? This is the one. Is it wrong? Sorry. <laughs> All 
All right, seeing no one to speak on uh, ZTA 209-01, I will close the public hearing and now ask the commissioners their pleasure on this matter. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt ordinance number 2019-112, amending the Burke County Zoning Ordinance in reference to zoning text amendment ZTA 2019-01 and adopt the following consistency statement. Zoning text amendment ZTA 2019-01 amends section 1216, Pier, mooring, and gazebo provisions of the Burke County Zoning Ordinance conforms with the comprehensive plan and is reasonable and in the public interest because one, Amendment ZTA 209-01 will allow residential boat moorings or gazebos on Lake R Road Hiss and Hickory to be consistent and compatible with existing structures on those two lakes. Two, Amendment ZTA 2019-01 will continue to maintain the existing standards for residential boat moorings and gazebos on Lake James. All right, gentlemen, you've heard the motion from the Vice Chair. All in favor, signify by raising the right hands. All opposed, Madam Clerk, that passes four to zero. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Pete. Moving on to item number eight is our informal public comments. Madam Clerk, anybody signed up? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we have four speakers tonight. Uh, Mr. James Gravely. For all of those that are speaking, if you will just announce your name and your address, and then you can begin. Hi, my name is James Gravely. I live on 4105 St. Paul's Church Road. Uh, to start with, thank you for your service. It's not always fun sitting through these meetings, I know. So, this is concerning a agenda item later today, concerning a removal of a trailer that was moved in illegally on St. Paul's Church Road and uh, uh, upon its entrance into our neighborhood uh, we contacted Bradley Kirkley who has been very supportive and has let us know of the steps necessary to uh, to ameliorate the the trailer issue and the trash that has been piled up on the property um, and he has informed us that the next step is in your hands and so I'd like you to uh, keep that in mind, that we've gone through the steps necessary going through the, the system. So thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, Madam Clerk. Mr. Um, James Halliburton. First, I'd like to say I'm kind of nervous up here. <laughs> but are, I, I would like to say, too, so <laughs> I would like to thank you guys. You kind of calmed me down a little bit. I, I'm glad to see that y'all still honor the flag and you're teaching our kids how to honor it. Uh, I'm, I'm just reiterating what Mr. Gravely said. Uh, we had a situation where uh, we've had it, and I, I'm sure Mr. Steve Wiston knows them. Uh, Sabrina Starnes and, and uh, uh, Dylan uh, Fry, they've all been in drugs. We finally got rid of them. But some more family movers are, came in. They brought a, a trailer that had no windows, gutted the side of it tore off, and probably what happened was people used to give around 1500 to $2,000 to get rid of these trailers off of these trailer lots. And that's probably where the people that moved in probably were buying their drugs. And, uh, you know, we got rid of the guy and his girlfriend that were there, thanks goodness to the Burke County Sheriff's Department, but we still got something there that somebody else can move right in, and we got the same situation again, we're going to have to go right through it. It took us almost a year to get this far. And, uh, like I said, it, it's just infestration right there, right beside our homes. It's their land. But they moved this mobile, it's a, it's a junk hole. They just moved it in there, and we got them out. But uh, the old trailer's still there. Come in wintertime, some more of that family, or he can move right back in. We like to see the county take some kind of action here. I don't know what it could be. Uh, tear it down. Good God, let me give me permission. I'll tear it down. Just help us out here a little bit. You wouldn't want this on your, uh, right beside your home. And I got grandkids. I'm telling you, I, I, I just, I'm really hoping that you guys help us out on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. 
Mr. Zin Zhao. I'm Lee Zinzo. I've uh, met most of you already, and I appreciate your uh, uh, forbearance with all my efforts to try to resolve uh, the best disposition for the land that is known as East Lake 2 and East Lake 3 on Lake James. Uh, I've been working on this project for about five years, and I want to see it come to a, a good conclusion. I've uh, been working primarily until recently with state parks. That didn't go through, but now, uh, due to the rezoning effort here, uh, I'm facing some new challenges. Uh, based on our last discussion, I went back and tried to, uh, I submitted a site plan to the uh, uh, county to consider. I uh, have cleared the roads, found a, a potential bidder in negotiations with somebody to bid on the property. So there's a lot of things going on. I sent an email this morning uh, and it's probably confusing everybody, but uh, what has happened just since last Friday is that the one party that was interested in developing this land told me that he could not even make me an offer. There'd be no value in it for him at all if it were down zoned because the infrastructure in that area requires uh, roads that go out for a mile to get out to the lake and the cost of all of that would be such that the number of lots that we're putting on it would not cover the cost of the infrastructure to get there. So that's one of the problems I'm now facing. Uh, if the rezoning goes forward, then it will put me in the position as manager of the uh, LLC that owns the property of basically being stuck with the land and having to try to find some other way to develop the property. Uh, or maybe somebody else would be more generous than this particular party. Uh, then I thought a solution might be, uh, as Scott said, maybe we could amend the uh, PRMU zoning to allow more lots. And I thought that was a solution until I discovered this morning that the, uh, from my trust attorney, that that wouldn't resolve the problem of, uh, the other problem I have is I'd like to donate some property uh, for the purpose of parks and recreation and, and also has some value to it that can be used to pull all the, the this, together. Anyway, I can't really resolve all this, uh, certainly not quickly. So I'm proposing at this point that we defer on any rezoning. Uh, I don't think that we have a solution currently, but I, I have a solution in mind, which would be to give me more time. And I think we do have a solution that would enable me to put an easement on the property and uh, protect the property uh, to, from, to permanently for Burke County ordinances to uh, continue as they are and to create the value that's needed to make this whole come thing come together and hopefully donate some property to the county or to another charitable cause and to be able to, to sell it at some profit. So let's appreciate your consideration for this was one of the proposals last the uh, interim meeting that you had was to defer for two years. So that's my recommendation. I hope you will consider that. Thank you, Mr. Zinzow. Miss Debbie Hawkins. My name is Debbie Hawkins. I live at 4043 Old Secrest Avenue in uh, Morganton. It's been a busy month for the new staff starting in animal services and the newly elected advisory board. The Animal Advisory Board had a called meeting in August where elected officers, we developed a mission statement and began identifying goals for 2019-2020. Amy Burnett and I also met with representatives from the different rescues in our area to identify any concerns or issues they had. In reviewing the animal ordinance as well as the Advisory Board bylaws, we have adopted the following as our mission. The Burke County Animal Advisory Board's primary mission is to advocate for the humane treatment of companion animals. This will be accomplished through encouraging pet responsibility by promoting and protecting the health, safety, and welfare of the <clears throat> companion animals and citizens of Burke County, monitoring animal welfare groups, providing care for the animals, providing support to animal services, partnering with rescue organizations to promote owner retention and adoptions, 
and five, advising the county commissioners on best practice for improvements to the animal ordinance, ensuring compliance with statutes pertaining to the care and treatment of animals. The animal services staff have done an incredible job reorganizing and improving standards of care in just one month. The future for the quality of care for our animals depends on all of us working together to find solutions. And I just wanted to update you on where we are with that. So thank you. Thank you. Great report. Anyone else, Madam Clerk? That's all the cards I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Moving on, item number nine is our consent agenda. At this time, I'd like to introduce Brian Steen, County Manager, who will at this time review the list on that consent agenda. Brian? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, first is ASD, Hours of Operation at the Animal Services Center. Item two, Clerk, Removal Appointment of, to Board of Adjustment. Item three, Clerk, Reappointment to Jury Commission. Item four, Clerk, Resolution Appointing New Review Officers for Glen Alpine. Item five, clerk appointment to the planning board. Item six, community development deed of trust cancellation. Item seven, tax department tax collection report for August 2019. And the final item is tax department release refund report for August 2019. That concludes your consent items. All right, gentlemen, you've heard the report on the consent agenda. Your pleasure on the consent. Mr. Chapman, I recommend that we approve all items as rendered on this consent agenda. All right, gentlemen, you heard Commissioner Taylor's motion. All in favor signify by raising of the right hand. All opposed? That passes four to nothing, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. County Manager. Moving on to item number 10 is our item for decisions. Our first item will be a condemnation appeal. Case file number 116-19, presented by Bradley Kirkley, our zoning administrator. Bradley? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, uh, the first item for you that we bring tonight is a condemnation for property. Address is 2467 U.S. Highway 70 on the eastern end of Burke County in the Eichert area. Um, the structure and home, which burned several years ago, uh, was actually condemned through the condemnation process in accordance with all general statute requirements. It was condemned by Kevin Flynn back on June 20th of 2019. Uh, within your packet and information, there were some photographs that were included there of the structure itself. Uh, the single family home is secured by a fence, which is locked. Uh, staff or members of building inspections have not been inside of the dwelling itself. Uh, but in accordance with general statutes, Anytime a property is condemned or a condemnation order is actually issued, the property owner in this situation, Philip Smith, had the opportunity to file a written appeal, which he did so within 10 days. Uh, that appeal, once it's filed, brings that before you all this evening for ultimately a decision regarding the, either the extenuation of additional time for the removal or the upholding of the current rule as it's been written. By general statute, the maximum amount of time Kevin Flynn could offer for the condemnation, uh, which is issued in the order as handed out on June 20th of 2019, was for the maximum amount of 60 days for the structure to be demolished and the lot to be cleared. Uh, an update to provide to you uh, before you render a decision here this evening since our pre-agenda meeting. As of Friday, the property itself that is referenced here was purchased by an individual. Uh, that property was purchased. Uh, I will give you the name of that individual. Uh, looks to be a Charles William Chaffin uh, out of Lenore. Uh, acquired the property from Mr. Smith in purchasing the property. He also obtained a demolition permit. I was able to reach Mr. Chaplin by phone on Friday uh, to touch base with him to let him know of the pending meeting this evening and to ask basically what is his steps looking forward to this. Uh, he advised me that he would have uh, equipment on site by the end of this coming week and expected to have all demolition completed within the next 60 days. He offered two months. Uh, so therefore, if the decision and the interpretation of the rule uh, from the board this evening is to uphold the order and offer 60 additional days for this demolition to occur, it looks like we do have a willing party that is going to accommodate and would keep it from coming out of tax dollars to ultimately do that. Thank if you have Brad. any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you, Bradley. Questions or comments for Bradley? All right, hearing none, what's the pleasure of the board? 
Mr. Chairman, it seems like a very reasonable solution and a win-win situation. So I'd like to make the motion to uphold the building inspector's ruling and grant an additional 60 days for the owner to comply with the condemnation order for case file 116-19. And I guess to make this legal, it will convey to the new owners the extension. All right, gentlemen, you've heard Commissioner Taylor's uh, motion. All in favor, signify by raising of the right hands. All opposed, Madam Clerk, that passes four to zero. Thank you so much. Moving on to our next item is an abatement and demolition order number 4155 at St. Paul, excuse me, at 4155 St. Paul's Church Road, presented by Bradley Kirk Kirkley Zoning Administrator. Bradley. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this uh, situation that is regarding 4155, uh, similar in fashion as what we just discussed, uh, there were a couple of citizens from the public who spoke in, in regards to this. I've worked in conjunction with them dealing with this matter. Uh, they were the uh, complaining parties in dealing with this 4155. Uh, long and short of it, uh, there was an illegal mobile home brought to this spot at 4155 St. Paul's Church Road. Uh, the zoning district is listed as R2, which by zoning regulation does not allow us to issue a permit for a metal-on-metal -metal single wide. Uh, the mobile home was brought in illegally. He was placed along St. Paul's Church Road. Uh, when we established contact with the property owner, he turned and moved it to the back of the property behind the tree line, uh, I guess in an effort that we wouldn't see it. Uh, that did not go over so well, so therefore we condemned the property and the structure. Uh, there is no power that has been granted. There's no water to the potential site. Uh, however, the mobile home still exists in its current fashion. Uh, to my knowledge, the property is vacant. Uh, there is some solid waste on the site. Within your pre-agenda information, there was a photo including a, a pickup truck vehicle that was blocked uh, there within the highway. That structure and vehicle has now been moved. So nothing for your decision night would deal anything with a motor vehicle to have it hauled away from the property. But ultimately what we are at is the condemnation ran its course. Uh, there was no appeal. There has been no public uh, uh, outcry or show from the property owner. A Kenneth Dwayne Piercy is the legal owner of the site. We have did multiple mailings, multiple notices, posting at the property, posting at his address. Uh, there is some outstanding tax information that hasn't been paid there regarding the property uh, so what staff would like is the is the blessing from the board to work in conjunction with our county attorney to see what steps can be taken to have this mobile home removed from the site to my knowledge it was derived from mcdowell county uh, once again a metal on metal can't be brought into burke so if that in fact is where it come from it's illegal across the board if you have any questions be happy to entertain them Thank you, Bradley. Questions or concerns from commissioners? Mr. Chairman, just for information, uh, Bradley, we're, I don't know, about every part of the world is being inundated by homeless people. And, uh, you know, including, I've had to call the sheriff a couple of times to, to get people from quit looking in my mailbox, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I, and I guess my question has to do with uh, first of all, the vehicle that's on there you used to get about $250 if you took it to the junkyard for, for trash. Would that not pay for the tow, tow cost? Of, of, of it, if you're referencing the black motor vehicle that was in the photo, that vehicle is now gone. That property owner of the vehicle removed it from the site. Okay. So all we are looking at strictly now is the metal-on-metal -metal manufactured home, okay. which ultimately we would look to secure a bid for the removal Whatever that cost would turn and do, we would file that in the purpose of the lien. As I said, that would go in conjunction with the outstanding taxes that have been listed. Uh, I've received multiple reports, anything from like uh, Commissioner um, Britton had referenced during pre-agenda, it could be several thousand. Uh, we've also been inquired to where it's $1,500. There's also a disposal fee at the landfill. So the total cost of what this may run us, I, I don't have an absolute fact to give to you. How, what's the age of a mobile home that uh, prohibits you from moving it? Isn't it 20 years? The cutoff date for any manufactured home is July 1st, 1976. Anything older than that date, it can't be relocated. This particular property would not allow for it to even go there at all. So regardless of its age, it's not allowed to be there. All right. Very good. Thank you. Other questions or comments? 
All right, hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to uphold the condemnation ruling for the mobile home and allow for code enforcement to use justifiable, justifiable means to remove the violations and nuisances from the property located at 4155 St. Paul's Church Road. Any cost via cleanup, demolition, or removal will be placed within a property lien and recorded within the Register of Deeds Office. All right, gentlemen, you heard the Vice Chair's motion. All in favor, signify by raising the right hand. Madam Clerk, that passes four to zero. Thank you, Bradley. Thanks, sir. Moving on to item number three, a zoning map amendment ZMA 2019-05 presented by Scott Carker, Deputy County Manager and Planning Director. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Good evening. Ms. Kay, good evening. So this has uh, been uh, before you already, and I just uh, will summarize what has transpired to date briefly. and. Uh, uh, where we are on this matter. So this went before the uh, planning board on May 23rd, 2019. At that meeting, they voted unanimously to recommend that ZMA 2019-05 be rezoned from uh, planned residential mixed use conditional district to the conservation district uh, low density. Then it came before this board at your regular August 20th meeting, you had a public hearing. Uh, you decided that you wanted to hear more information because there was uh, some concerns from Mr. Uh, Zinzo, who is uh, here this evening and spoke. And then you decided to recess that till tonight. And prior to that, on September 3rd, we met at 4 p.m. and we had a discussion about some of the issues on this case. So. Just to uh, <clears throat> briefly go over the uh, case, um, this started back in 2004 with uh, Carolina Sooners, which is as we know as Crescent Communities, and they petitioned Burke County to rezone approximately 1,122 acres of land, which is off of North Carolina Highway 126. You're most familiar with those, that area because the county park is there. And so they gave us 134 acres adjacent to these properties. Um, and so they uh, petitioned to have a parallel conditional, uh, parallel residential mixed use conditional district. And basically that included six different parcels of land. And each one of those parcels of land had different allowances or restrictions. And so through the years, some of those have been given away by Crescent, like the land that we received for County Park. Some of them have been further subdivided or cut up or they have been sold off. And so Crescent is out of the uh, land business. And so when you have a planned residential mixed use conditional district zoning, that's good for essentially two years and you're supposed to be active and keeping it going. You can come back and request extensions uh, to uh, uh, keep that zoning in place. So Crescent had come by uh, several times, but the zoning uh, expired that they had put in place in 2004, five years ago. And so since that time, uh, not much has been done with the land out there. Uh, there was a proposal that State Parks was gonna buy uh, these properties that are now being requested to be removed from this rezoning and uh, that deal fell through as you're aware uh, after some time so let's see here so the request is before you now the staff has not changed our position really on uh, this even though there are some options uh, for you all to consider but our request, just to be clear, is Burke County Community Development staff is requesting the rescinding of all development standards and conditions approved under the original Eastlake PRMU Conditional District Ordinance approved by the Burke County Board of Commissioners on May 4th, 2004. Staff is also proposing to rezone 13 parcels of land consisting of approximately 586 acres in the Linville Township. 
The parcels are requested to be rezoned from the planned residential mixed use conditional district to the low density conservation district. If the rezoning is approved, uh, land use of the subject properties will be regulated under the general zoning standards of conservation district low density. These parcels are also located within the Lake Overlay District, and that overlay district would remain. And I'm happy to answer any uh, questions that you all may have. All right, gentlemen, you've heard Scott's presentation. Any questions or comments? Scott, uh, the rezoning request that was made, uh, if I understood your comments as, as you stated it and looking at your material. Yes, sir. Uh, we would not extend any extension to, for him to, to do uh, and try to, uh, I guess you'd say, uh, make progress in developing that property. So you have several uh, options. Um, one uh, option would be to remove those parcels from the rezoning and to rezone the other parcels as requested, or you could rescind the uh, East Lake planned residential mixed use conditional district, which is now pretty much defunct. The reason is, is it was built upon a set of parameters that don't really exist today. So it was based on sewer. And so the numbers are just not realistic. The other thing is, is when this was put into place in 2004, there was no studies or anything looking at the land, what's feasible, what's not feasible, what can work, what can't work. When they developed the state park and they took out 3,000 something uh, acres from Crescent to be able to develop, they essentially just threw a lot of uh, density over here on this side of the lake but there was no study or anything done to say this can actually be done. There's a lot of steep slopes in there. There's a lot of uh, areas that you really can't develop very easily because they are a real challenge. And so I have heard from a developer, the developer that Mr. Uh, Zinzo uh, referenced, and he said that he would have to get at least 200 lots out of the property because of having to build in four miles of roads essentially to get to the uh, lake shore. So as you're well aware, all the value at Lake James is on that lake shore. As soon as you move off uh, the lake shore just a, a hundred yards, the values drop very quickly. And so uh, one of your other options could be to uh, request a new planned residential mixed use conditional district that meets today's criteria and the realities on the uh, ground that would allow for you know more units than the CDL. So conservation district low density what he has left would allow for 110 uh, lots and the uh, developer was hoping to maybe close or something before this meeting or to, to do something, uh, but he said he needed 200. So that's, that's a, a, another option. And then the other option is just to rezone it as requested and as the planning board recommended. Other questions or comments? All right, hearing none at this time, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt ordinance two, number 2019-07, amending the Burke County Zoning Map and Related Consistency Statement. Statement of Consistency, ZMA 2019-05. The proposed rezoning will be consistent with the 2016-2030 through 2030 Burke County Strategic Land Use Plan and considered reasonable in the, in, in the public interest because the proposed rezoning is consistent with Section 9A13 of the zoning ordinance to, re to rezone parcels to an appropriate general zoning district when progress has not been made toward developing the parcels in accordance with the current approved conditional zoning district and plans. All right, gentlemen, you've heard the vice chair's motion. All in favor signify by raising of the right hand. All opposed. 
Madam, that passes three to one. I'm sorry, Jeff, I didn't see your hand go up. So that does pass three to one. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jimmy. All right, moving on to item number 11 is our reports and comments. Our first is general services water and sewer report presented by Miles Champion, our general services director, Miles. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, previously, you had asked me to put together an overview of our water and sewer system. Uh, I've uh, included these, uh, uh, these the slides I'm going to show in your packet. And this is just a brief overview. I can go into a lot of details and some things I would have to dig out of some uh, previous records. But uh, Burke County uh, currently operates 18 and a half miles of uh, gravity sewer lines and about 12 miles of force mains and also about 93 miles of water distribution systems. And uh, the first thing I'd like to go over uh, is the uh, water system, just to give you some brief data. Uh, our water system is supplied by four suppliers. Uh, as you can see there, the city of Morganton is, uh, provides about 54 million gallons a month to, to our system. Town of Valdez, 30 million gallons a month. Town of Longview, 10 million gallons a month, and Oxford Water Corporation, 55 million gallons a month. So uh, all in all, we, we purchase about 149 million gallons a month uh, from those four providers. And something just to take from that is that you can see that Morganton and Oxford Water Corporation are your larger suppliers, uh, making up about approximately a third of our uh, water for each of those. Water storage, uh, we have uh, uh, five uh, water storage tanks. They're all ground storage tanks. We have no leg tanks. Uh, they're located on high elevations to give our system pressure. Our capacity uh, from like Mineral Springs is 100,000 gallons. Uh, Music Mountain is also 100,000 gallons. Watershed is our smallest tank at 50,000. Then we got Sugar Loaf at 250,000 and Tiny Mountain at 200,000. So all in all, we can store 700,000 gallons worth of water uh, and that uh, gives you a, a, a pretty decent fire flow volume there. Uh, water customers, that's what we really like to see is uh, more customers and currently uh, the breakdown on that is residential customers is about 1,753 active customers. Uh, we do have a, approximately 2,200 uh, meters in the ground, but not all of them are active. Some of them are uh, vacant. Uh, some of them are uh, 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 under construction, et cetera. Commercial industrial is about 46. And then we have about 26 uh, customer accounts for schools. That's not 26 schools. We may have multiple meters per, per school. So we do have a, a, a pretty good size uh, school uh, base there. And onto our sewer system, uh, sewer is uh, pumped to the town of Valdez and the city of Morganton uh, for, uh, for treatment. We also, what, what I didn't include in that was we also pump to now the city of Hickory as part of that. Uh, we've got four major pump stations in our system. So we don't treat, we just move wastewater. Uh, Acre Creek pump station uh, is 1,000 gallons a minute. Uh, George Hildebrand School is uh, 300 uh, gallons a minute. Indian Hills is at 1,000 gallons a minute. And Island, Island Creek is 1,100 gallons a minute. Uh, uh, currently, Eckerd Creek is, uh, uh, we're going to start construction on rebuilding that uh, here in October. Uh, so that will be a, we're, we, we are not having an, an additional flow capacity. We're just uh, keeping the flow we have. It, it, there is plenty of capacity in that plant, in that uh, station. Uh, active sewer accounts are not nearly as high as what the water accounts are. We've got about 111 sewer accounts with only about eight commercial and seven schools. Uh, the current projects we have on the, on the table currently is the uh, Highway 18 South and Runyon Road water line project. Uh, they have uh, completed the Roney Road section of that water line and are currently tap making taps and connecting houses that are part of the CDD CDBG grant uh, uh, project on that. 
they're currently installing the line along uh, 18 South, uh, and, and that's on schedule. Uh, that was a, a $2 million uh, grant for that project. Uh, also, uh, we had a pre-construction com conference today with the with the contractor for uh, Eckerd Creek Pump Station. That's a $1.6 million project uh, and will, uh, should begin uh, uh, October 1st. Uh, the work will take uh, approximately 11 months to complete and that's a, um, a complete rebuild while that station is under, uh, is operating now. Uh, and um, uh, uh, that, that again is uh, no additional capacity. Uh, what I'd also like to do is, is, go, is give you a little bit of a geography uh, uh, session here, just to give you an overview. This is our both. Uh, this is a map of both uh, water and sewer system. Uh, your sewer system is in the green, all the green lines, and this is all the gravity north of I-40 uh, near the Hildebrand and Colling Springs area. Uh, we have a force main that's in the dash green line that serves the George Hildebrand School. So even though we have that one customer there, we have a substantial amount of force main to get back to a gravity system uh, at I near I-40. Uh, I overlaid the water system on this map so that you can sort of get an idea of how water and sewer are connected or uh, serve that same area. So even though you have sewer in the north uh, north of I-40, most of your water, sewer, and customers are south of I-40. Uh, I've located some of the tanks to give you some geographic uh, uh, a view of where our water system lays and where our capacity lays. Uh, the, uh, the tanks are, are in great uh, locations to spread out all across our system. So yeah, like yeah, as far as we can go out to the uh, southwest is a watershed tank, and that's that, that small tank out there. So all of these uh, tanks have to be filled by pump stations, and that's the little orange triangles. And we use those pump stations to fill our tanks up. Uh, George Hildebrand has both water and sewer. That's one of our uh, school customers for water. Uh, the project that's under construction now for the water lines the dash line at the bottom is the Roney Road uh, water line uh, project that takes it to uh, Sugar Loaf uh, Fire Department. And that one is now completed. And then the uh, 18 South water line here uh, makes an interconnect to uh, sort of an east and west uh, systems. Uh, currently, the only interconnect we have is along here where the Sugar Loaf area is, is uh, served. So this is a very important interconnect. I think it will make, a, make our system a lot stronger. We can also uh, have an opportunity to make some, uh, pick up some customers along the way. Uh, so this is a, a very good uh, project and is, uh, is uh, fast getting to completion. Okay, the next slide uh, I'd like to show you is, uh, is primarily, primarily sewer. So this is the uh, Island, Island Creek pump station here. And it, we have gravity lines that come uh, from uh, the outskirts of uh, the Knob area, Colling Springs, uh, through uh, Rutherford College, uh, and is pumped to uh, Valde system. So this is a very small system, but it uh, serves a, a, a good need in that area. The, we overlaid uh, uh, circles over each one of our sewer customers to give you just a graphic feel of what your service area is currently there. So this is your sewer. Uh, down here is a part of the water, part of the water system along I-40 uh, with uh, the same thing. We've got the dots or water customers and then we just put circles over them to give you some service area uh, uh, on that. Okay, the next slide is uh, your major sewer system that's north of I-40. Um, you've got the ma our largest pump station is Indian Hills pump station here that pumps uh, uh, up to the Longview sewer system, but then uh, continues uh, through Longview to the Hickory system where it goes to Henry Fort 
uh, wastewater treatment plant to be treated. Um, you've got Ecker Creek Pump Station here that uh, is now uh, going to be uh, rebuilt. Uh, that serves a I-40 corridor, uh, 70, uh, 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 Highway 70 corridor in, the, in this area. Um, uh, then you have a, another a gravity line that comes out from under I-40 on the south side. And this is, this is a, uh, one of our older lines that serves mostly the Hildebrand uh, area. We do have uh, about six interconnects with Hildebrand along this corridor here. Uh, that's where most of the customers are and that's where most of our flow is. Uh, this gravity line has, as you can see, very few customers on the line, but it's necessary uh, to pick up uh, this area near I-40 there. And then, of course, the, la the last slide is, uh, uh, is the George Hildebrand School. And you can sort of see how uh, uh, we, the sewer, uh, the gravity sewer has a few customers on it here with, with a lot, very long uh, force main. Uh, but you also have uh, quite a bit of uh, water service in this area, in the George Hildebrand area around that school. But it, since it's sort of an isolated case, I wanted to bring that up as a separate separate uh, slide and that that's sort of the overview of the system uh, and i've got books and books of data and that's boring engineering stuff so uh, if you have any questions i'll try my best to answer them thank you miles questions or comments miles uh, not about your report but the new uh, group of houses apartments being built in hildebrand do you know how many of that is? And I'm assuming that Eichard will supply that and not the, not the county. I, I do not know how many of that is. Uh, I'll, I can find that out and let you know. Uh, that is probably going to be Eichard Water Corporation. Uh, they, haven't, they haven't made an application uh, for water at, at our office yet. I assumed it would be. It's only probably less than 1,000 feet from where they're, they're collect their bills their offices right. so, but it's a nice uh, nice set of apartments and I understand they're going to be um, some single bed double beds and three bedrooms all three uh, offered but I I just wondered how many it was going to be and if you knew that so thank you yes sir other questions or comments from miles miles I just want to say that's a good report I like it simplified and it makes it easy to read so thank you very much Great. for putting the time in let me know if i can do anything else for you thank you, you. Other, any other questions or comments all right sir so i'll need a motion to accept the report the motion, all right you've heard the motion by member all in favor six five by raising the right hand be four to nothing madam clerk thank you so much moving on to item number two is our reports and comments and i believe i'll start over to the right with the county attorney uh, nothing for me tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Chairman, uh, other than our regular uh, appointed committees that we're on, and two of mine did not have meetings last month, so you only got three out of five. But I would like to add to that that uh, uh, several of us did this. But, uh, I attended the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners annual conference uh, that was a three-day event uh, 9:23 to 9:24. the Meriden open house and tour on 9 13 uh, the Lake James fire and rescue 50th year and celebration on Saturday 9 14 and also worked the Morgan historical festival on September the 7th and they had a huge crowd I think it was a great success for the city of Morganton. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Like Maynard said, I, I attended some of those very same things and uh, I had a really good time. Uh, a couple things I, I did want to mention. Um, I'm, uh, last week I was honored to be voted in as the uh, new chair of the trustees at Western Piedmont Community College. Um, we've got a lot of exciting things going on at the community college. Um, one of the things that we're going to be working on this year, as many of you already know, 
we're going to be electing a new college president. That search has already begun. Um, so um, that's about a six month process and uh, we've been very fortunate over, over the course and history of uh, Western Piedmont Community College to have consistently high standards as far as um, great college presidents that um, uh, leave a mark on the community. So um, we'll be working on that. And some good news uh, is some of you may not know, um, we're paid on FTE at the college, which is a look back. I won't get into all that, but basically attendance. And when, when the economy's as good as it's been for the last several years, we've been in a bull market for 10 years, as we all know. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Well, when people have jobs, they don't tend to uh, attend uh, community college as much. So the participation rates go down, the funding goes down. But I will say um, there's been, and that's across the state, all community colleges and even nationwide. It doesn't matter. It's not just Western Piedmont. And that's just the health of the economy. But I will say because of innovative uh, programs and workforce development, um, pro, uh, initiatives that have been taken in the last couple of years that um, we've actually turned those numbers around and we're actually see a 9% increase over last fall's um, enrollment for the first time in years. Um, and one of our programs, which is Career College Promise uh, for high school students, um, we have uh, in enrolled in that 498, which is a 40% increase over last year. So good things happen at the community college. And I did want to mention too, um, and can't see this at home, but uh, I was at a TDA board meeting this morning and um, our state magazine, which many of you um, subscri um, uh, subscribe to, it's a wonderful uh, uh, magazine. It's, and it's, um, it's been very kind to Burke County. And our state magazine is featuring uh, Burke County in the Burke in the October uh, edition. I got a cover here. It says uh, Grand Canyon of the East, Linville Gorge, beautiful picture. So another great thing happening um, here in the county. And actually out of a couple hundred page magazine, they're going to dedicate from what I believe is about 75 pages just to Burke County. So, you know, there's a ton happening, whether it's tourism, uh, workforce development, things at the college, BDI, we're all working together and it's just it's fun to be a part of right now because, uh, as you said, we're all about advancing and we really are. So, anyway, sorry to take so much time, but lots of good news I wanted to share. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good report. Commissioner Britton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to update the board on uh, our DSS director search. Uh, that search is well underway. Uh, we've been uh, working with our consultant to help with that. Uh, had a uh, meeting with them today. Uh, beginning to narrow down candidates. We have a number of uh, excellent candidates. We'll be moving on forward with that project uh, pronto. Very excited about that. Madam Clerk? Nothing for me tonight. Thank you. All right. Mr. County Manager? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe this is the first meeting we've had since we made the change to animal services from animal control operating the um, animal services facility and included in your agenda packet was the report from the state and their inspection. As you may remember, I think it was either late spring, early summer, we had to close the shelter for about a week to reseal the floors. Uh, that was pretty labor intensive. They had to grind it and then reseal it. And then uh, a few weeks ago, we also closed again for another week so we could reseal the walls. And possibly during part of that process, some. Um, changes were made in the runs that resulted in the um, inspection finding some issues that they want to see corrected. I think we'll get that done in a reasonable period of time as well as uh, sealing the floors in the, the I'm going to call it Sally Port area where they bring the dogs in, take them out of the truck and put them inside the building. That's not where they are generally, the dogs are generally housed to, to come into contaminants. But we've also included in your packet um, the animal services report from August 1st to August 30th. Um, of course, we're managing the facility a little differently than when it was under the sheriff. But the intake uh, during the period of August 1st through August 30th was 66 dogs and 100 cats. The live release rate for dogs was 87%, and the live release rate for cats was 80%. Of course, our goal is 90% or higher. But again, this is the first full month with a new team, and I think they're doing very well, and that um, they're networking with our community. And of course, 
you had the first uh, is this wolf for you tonight so um, again I think they're doing well and we will always strive to improve and do better each month thank you sir thank you mr. county manager uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Burke County Board of uh, Commissioners, I want to issue congratulations to Kevin Austin, who was elected president of the North Carolina County Commissioners Association. I will also be returning this year as chair to the Legislative Affairs Committee, and I thank uh, President Austin for allowing me to do that. Remember, if you're watching, please don't litter in Burke County. I would appreciate that. Please remember to have your pet spayed or neutered. And again, like us on Facebook if you will. Madam Clerk, our vacancy announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. We have the following opportunities for citizens to be involved in county boards and committees, the Hickory Regional Planning Commission, the Adult Care and Nursing Home Community Advisory Committees, Council on Aging, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, the City of Morganton Board of Adjustment for the ETJ, the City of Morganton Planning Board for the ETJ, the Voluntary Agriculture Board, the Burke County Board of Adjustment and Planning Board, Western Piedmont Regional Transit Authority Transportation Advisory Board, Partners Behavioral Health Management, Burke Senior Center Advisory Council, and the Recreation Commission. Thank you, Madam Clerk, and if you are watching, go from home, please take advantage of these opportunities to serve here in Burke County. We do have a need for closed session tonight to discuss threatened or pending litigation to preserve the attorney-client privilege or to discuss economic development matters or to discuss personnel matters as authorized by North Carolina General Statute 143, 318.11, paragraph A, 3, 4, and 6. I do not anticipate a vote in this session. With that, I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. Let's take about a five minute break and then move into closed session. All right, Madam Clerk, we had a proper motion to come out of closed session.